What is happening everybody? Trey here and today at Reactions to the Classics I'm going to be uh, giving a reaction review to Tracy Chapman's self-titled uh, debut record right here and I want to shout out our longtime friend and patron of the channel Brian for suggesting this one and uh, be sure as well to check out Brian's channel that uh, he has. I will put it in the description. He's going through a really awesome series right now where he joins uh, Rich, another one of uh, our buddies in the RTTC community um, and uh, another one of our uh, longtime subscribers, Doc, as they go through and make a, like a perfect album of each year, uh, so to speak, man. And uh, starting in uh, 65, going uh, going through the years, and it's been a great series. So I just wanted to get that out there. But all that to say, it is time to get into Tracy Chapman's debut record. Um, just as a disclaimer, I have heard this record before, but it has been quite some time. And uh, I've listened to well over, you know, a thousand albums albums uh, in, in the meantime. So uh, I know the big hits off this thing, but some of those uh, deeper cuts I'm not uh, familiar uh, that familiar with. So I'm excited to revisit this record of uh, one of the great uh, singer songwriters of uh, that 80s period right here, man. So all that to say, let's just get into the quick facts right here. As I mentioned, it was the debut record from Miss Tracy Chapman, released in April of 1988, recorded at Power Track Studio in Hollywood over eight weeks, uh, really critically acclaimed. It went to one here in the states and surprisingly uh, going through the research it's uh, sold over 6 million here in the states and 20 million worldwide I didn't know uh, I mean once you hit that 15 20 million mark you're, you're getting into that uh, you know upper upper echelon that is rarefied air it was also number one in Austria New Zealand Switzerland Denmark and the UK so had that staying power throughout the entire world a uh, little bit of backstory in 87 she was discovered by fellow Tufts University student Brian Kopelman uh, in an interview he said, quote, I was helping organize a boycott protest against apartheid at school, and someone told me there was this great protest singer I should get to play at the rally. He went to see uh, Tracy perform at a coffee house. He said, quote, Tracy walked on stage and it was like an epiphany. Her presence, her voice, her songs, her sincerity, it all came across. After this, Copelman told her that his father was at the time co-owner of SBK Publishing and could help her make a record. She did not consider the offer seriously. Copelman, however, was very interested in Chapman, so he attended most of her shows. She finally agreed to talk to him, but did not record any demos. Uh, he later discovered that she had recorded demos at the Tufts radio station WMFO for copyright purposes. Her demo of the song Talking About a Revolution was taken to radio stations, and after the success, he copied it and took it to his dad. According to the interview, quote, he immediately got the picture and flew up to see her. Her demo led her to a signing with Electra Records. She said, I have to say that I never thought I would get a contract with a major record label. All the time since I was a kid listening to records and the radio, I didn't think there was any indication that record people would find the kind of music that I did marketable. Especially when I was singing songs like Talking About a Revolution during the 70s, I didn't see a place for me there. Uh, Copelman had some difficulty in finding a producer for the record uh, due to the popularity of dance pop and uh, synth pop at the time. They then found David Kirschenbaum, who later recalled, quote, I'd been looking for something acoustic to do for some time. There was a sense in the industry of a slight boredom with everything out there and that people might be willing to listen again to lyrics to, to someone who made statements. Chapman's greatest concern during her meetings with Kirschenbaum was that the integrity of her songs remain intact because she wanted to record real simple. Kirschenbaum said, quote, I wanted to make sure that she was in front vocally and thematically and that everything was built around her. Every song that was featured on the result of the record was uh, featured on her demo tape, except for Fast Car, which resulted uh, as one of the last songs recorded for the record. All the songs here written by Tracy Chapman due to copyright. Full um, album won't be here in the YouTube video, but you can check out the Vimeo link where all the song will be included. If you already know this record, man, just want to hear uh, my thoughts on it, you can just uh, hang out here. But all that to say, thanks to Brian for suggesting this. And let's get into it, man. Speaking of talking about a revolution, that is our lead song here. It's the second single, went to 75 in the States. It was a big hit internationally, though, reaching the top 40 in several countries and uh, received a, a lot of heavy radio play uh, throughout the years during certain revolutions and just uh, human rights events as well. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty notable and um, a, a cool thing that a song like this has uh, much power and shows the power of music, man. So really great song right here if you've never heard it. 
you're in for a treat and uh, that's going to lead us right into fast car after that so what a way to start this album off but uh, all that to say man got the lyrics pulled up let's enjoy tracy chapman's talking about a revolution all right talking about a revolution uh love the way that tracy sings that line in particular right here man i mean i already had this song hearted I've, i was already uh, quite familiar with it and it's just such a great opener to the record as well i think i'm um, just kind of a uh, setting the stage for what uh, this album would entail lyrically as well. Tracy not holding anything back here on the opener and um, they still have uh, that timeless quality in the lyrics to be able to um, just be uh, be used in various types of situations where anyone is uh, uh, wanting that uh, you know revolution, that, uh, that fire within them to uh, change the status quo and, and uh, how things are being run and done. Um, and I, I like that idea that they're talking about a revolution it sounds like a whisper and then um, boom the instrumentation kicks up that bass in particular gets a little punchy as she talks about you know the welfare lines the salvation army a waste of time in the unemployment line sitting around around waiting for a promotion poor people gonna rise up and get their share poor people gonna rise up and take what's theirs I do like the bridge too the little run 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 um, uh, and um, I, I think that that's just kind of a um, shows the ability of Tracy to not only write these words but deliver them in a way that um, still has a sense of you know melody and catchiness about them while uh, keeping that air of seriousness in my opinion man um, a really great song uh, and uh, just a, a fantastic way to start off the record and uh, with how good this song is we go to what I think is an even better song here. We have Fast Car as uh, the lead single. It went to six in the States, four in the UK. Her appearance on the Nelson Mandela 70th birthday tribute greatly helped the song. Received three Grammy Award nominations for Record of the Year, Song of the Year, and Best Female Pop Performance. Uh, it also won for that uh, Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. It also received an MTV Music Award nomination. And uh, this is number 71 on the uh, Rolling Stone Top 500 Songs of all time. Uh, in April 2011, it entered the UK top 10 for the second time after Michael Coolings performed it on Britain's Got Talent. So hey man, with all these uh, different talent shows that pop up, you never know if you write a classic song that might get you some airplay. I know that happened on American Idol quite a bit back in the day. But uh, Tracy said, quote, Fast Car was the song that was played on the radio, so it was something that turned out to take a significant role in shaping my first record and probably the public perception of me as a singer-songwriter who was writing about stories stories, songs which tell stories about people's lives and very generally represents the world that I saw it when I was growing up in Cleveland, Ohio, coming from a working class background. In part, everything that a person writes is autobiographical, but some songs are directly and most of them are not. And Fast Car wasn't one that was directly autobiographical. I never had a Fast Car. It's just a story about a couple, how they are trying to make a life together and they face challenges. I had so many people come up to me and say that they felt it was their song and someone told me at one point that they thought I'd been reading their mail. They were saying, you seem to know my story story and people would come up and tell me about a car relationship and have some detail that they felt was in the song that represented something that happened in their lives so uh i always like to read what the artists kind of say about the track especially one that uh is one of their most famous works so uh all that to say man let's get into this classic fast car i mean such a classic song it has all its acclaim for a reason uh, just uh, i mean it had been a, a while since i listened to the song as i was following with the lyrics and it just tells such a um, wonderful yet heartbreaking story. Uh, just uh, the talents of Tracy are in full effect right here. You have that, um, you know, really uh, soft guitar melody. And, um, you know, in the chorus, you know, we get the, the drum kick uh, that goes in a little quicker tempo before we, uh, you know, strip it back again. So, you know, pretty uh, simple um, on the musical arrangement because uh, it just lets Tracy um, tell, tell her story, man. And, and, you know, we get that you got to fast car obviously that refrain um and you know we're introducing the first verse to somebody wanting to break out of their situation starting from zero got nothing to lose maybe we'll make something me myself i got nothing to prove um 
um, you know, it's, you know, saving up a little bit of money, you know, the, talking, looking of the future, we can get jobs, uh, see what it means to be living. Then she knows about her personal life. Her dad always lives in the bottle. Uh, I think the line, his body's too young to look like this. When mama went off and left him, she wanted more from life than he could give. Ooh, there's some biting lines that really just hit, uh, you know, close to home, you feel, for uh for um you know a lot of people not not for me necessarily but uh uh the, the, you know just that honesty there oh it's it's quite impressive um and so she ends up quitting school and um taking care of her dad and you know she works at the convenience store later on it uh she notes that now she's working in a, a market as a checkout girl i know things will get better you'll find work and i'll get promoted we'll move out of the shelter buy a bigger house live in the suburbs chase that american dream and then um as we get towards the end of the song you know she continues to say you got a fast car but at the end of the day it's all this guy has he sees more of his friends than he does of the kids so we assume that they uh you know have kids together now and uh he's uh, staying out drinking late just like her dad did man and it's uh, almost like the cycle that's going but she says i ain't going anywhere um so take your fast car and keep driving um and uh the final line you know you got to make a decision leave tonight or live and die this way um yeah i I think the, the there's a lot of surface level stuff like we just went through that's um, you know impressive as you're looking at the song, but also big picture stuff about breaking generational um, you know cycles of, uh, of addiction of poverty and uh, just that uphill climb, especially here in America where it seems like uh, uh, you know for as much as you try you'll get uh, you know hit with uh, various bills that that come up or whatever the case may be trying to get out of that rut and uh, have that financial security. Um, no matter how hard you work, it's uh, easier said than done sometimes, that's for sure. So I think that's why this song has such staying power, even all these decades later. And I know I spent a long time talking about it, but I think it deserves uh, to be, uh, you know, analyzed like that, man. Fantastic track. What a way to start off your record with uh, Revolution in this. And now we're going to third track here, Across the Lines. And uh, let's cue this one up. All right, Across the Lines, continuing the, uh, you know, very uh, socially conscious and, and powerful lyricism, talking about race relations here, and, uh, you know, Tracy being able to uh, give quite quite the voice to that. Uh, and again, I, I quite like, uh, you know, just the, the way the song starts. Across the Lines, who would dare to go under the bridge, over the tracks that separates whites from the blacks? Um, you know, just a great uh, metaphor and imagery there of, uh, you know, the lines that... Uh, divide and uh, and separate us on um you know that racial level talking about different um you know riots that have gone down um on the back streets of america they killed the dream of america again that that sense of that american dream that's even touched on in fast car talked about in a different avenue here on um you know if it's even a, a viable dream if it's even real um in in this current uh, state that she's writing here in the, the late 80s talking about a little black girl gets assaulted ain't no reason why why uh, newspapers print the story racist tempers fly um two black boys get killed one white boy goes blind um choose sides run for your lives tonight the riots begin uh i i think too that the uh, instrumentation though not up to par in, in my opinion with the first two tracks still kind of sets a that sense almost uh you know it's pretty laid back but then um you know at points it just uh kind of it's not eerie uh that, that's not the word i'm looking for but i, I don't know what particular Particular, like uh, it might have just been a straight up guitar that was a uh, you know tunes a little uh, uh, weird but um, you know whenever uh, they let loose on that a couple different times in the song it uh, just kind of gave uh, again almost a bit of that uneasy type of feeling that uh, there's something that's a little off just like uh, there is in America with our racial um, you know relations even uh, to this day man so uh, another really strong song by Tracy right here and now we're going to uh, the shortest song on the record right here, where you went across the lines. Now we're going behind the wall. Let's cue it up. We keep the powerful and, uh, you know, honestly, a chilling song right here. Behind the wall as uh, Tracy... Yeah, not not one to shy away from tough topics as we uh, talk about uh, domestic violence right here. Uh, just an acapella type of track. And, you know, this is why it's good to revisit albums in full that you haven't listened to in years because I totally forgot about this song, man. And it's... Uh, 
you know, it, it's fantastic for, for what she's trying to get across right here. Um, it just really shows off the um, impressive nature of Tracy's voice right here. A great voice that, um, you know, has, has kind of that gravitas and power to it that you need when you're discussing a subject like this. Um, she knows she's hearing the screaming happening from, you know, across the room or whatever the case may be. And um, we get that refrain, the police always come late if they come at all noting that it's not even going to do any good to call and we see that later on in the song um they arrive they say they can't interfere with domestic affairs they walk out the door the tears well up in their eyes that bureaucracy of um you know law establishment and random rules that are in place that uh, really make no logical sense um that's uh, coming to a head right there and then um we get the the really chilling line last night i heard the screaming then a silence that chilled my my soul prayed that I was dreaming when I saw the ambulance hit the road so obviously you can let your imagination go there there's no screaming anymore this woman got um, you know beat down uh, quite severely to where she you know can't even make a sound and then the policeman came said I'm here to make the peace will the crowd disperse I think we could all use some sleep that tells me there and I, I'm maybe I'm interpreting wrong but policeman doesn't even care that a woman's really brutally beaten or you know possibly even killed here in this domestic uh, uh, affair he just wants to keep the peace so everybody can get some sleep and we can move on to the next day type of thing and just sweep it under the rug so uh all in all man whew, really uh i mean what a what a four song um you know, run here to, to open this record and uh now we're going to uh another song that uh, i know is quite quite a hit baby can i hold you right here third single went to 48 here in the states been covered many times most successfully by neil diamond of all people for his record the best years of our lives and um so let's uh cue this one up. all right baby can i hold you bringing it right here and uh you, you know we kind of get a shift here from the more serious songs not that this uh didn't still have an air of seriousness about it but here we shift more to just a uh, relationship love type of song and uh, kind of the complexities of this relationship as uh, Tracy's lover right here um, you know can't really say the word sorry or forgive me or uh, even I love you uh, words don't come easily like I love you I love you and uh, you know she kind of keeps that uh, ending refrain for you know each of those phrases forgive me and I'm sorry uh, but the chorus but you can say baby baby can I hold you tonight maybe if I told you the right words at the right time you'd be mine uh, so Tracy's not really looking for much here from this person um, you know heck if they been together for these years uh, gone by. There's obviously still uh, love here, and um, even if this uh, other person is having a hard time opening up or taking responsibility, Tracy's still uh, there and uh, just wants a just wants a little show of affection uh, right here. Just just hold me, tell me that you're sorry, and uh, we'll be good to go, and that you love me. It's a really good uh, way in the track listing too. Um, you know, probably for most people, where you get the very very serious songs, you kind of you know change and switch the subject matter up in a kind of tone with uh with this track right here so shout out baby can i hold you now we're gonna go to mountains oh thanks let's kick it off mountains oh thanks definitely got to give the heart treatment to this one um man uh, the, the tracy continues on and uh just let's let's her thoughts be known on just the consumerism of uh of the day and how the rich get richer and uh just that idea you know that she notes in the very first line uh that you know the life i've wanted i guess i'll never have i'll be working for someone else until i'm in my grave i'll be dreaming of elisa bees and mountains of mountains of things you know i didn't really get this uh and, until you know i was reading the lyrics here um we almost get into her dreamlike state i think here for most of the song because she notes she has the the cars the furs uh the maid um everybody will be jealous of her she's gonna have you know the champagne and caviar you know all all the staples of that rich decadent lifestyle right there um because you know who we are those who deserve the best in life and know what money's worth and those whose sole misfortune was having mountains of nothing at birth. Um, and then, you know, she notes the people that'll tell her to try to save her soul and renounce everything that she gained by exploiting other human beings. Uh, consume more than you need, 
this is the dream. Um, yet again, that concept of almost the American dream popping up here. Um, and she notes that uh, she's going to have a, a grave that's deep and wide enough to take with her all of her things. Bit of irony there since, you know, you'll be dead. Um, and I, I think that uh, Tracy did that, obviously, intentionally. Um, she says, mostly I feel lonely. Good people are only my stepping stones. It's going to take all of my mountains of things to surround me, keep all my enemies away, keep my sadness and loneliness at bay. And then we kind of shift back, I think, to her present tense, where she again repeats the opening line about, you know, having to work for somebody else. And then uh, we just get that refrain that she'll just be dreaming, dreaming, dreaming. That's what makes me think that most of this song, obviously, is her just dreaming of this different type of life that she'll never be able to have. Um, and I, I think it's just a great um, uh, analysis of just uh, the, the greed, especially, again, here in America, where, you know, the distribution of wealth from the top to even, you know, the middle class is just so um so stark and um so wide that it can it can definitely be uh you know a bit discouraging sometimes when you see you know these people balloon up to you know a hundred hundred billion dollars in net worth and whatnot um when you're struggling to get by man so uh very good song right there and now we're going to go to she's got her ticket um let's cue this one all right she's got her ticket um i really enjoyed the uh the the guitar work by ed black here man shout out to him on that steel guitar definitely gave a bit of a uh, unique you know musical backing compared to the rest of this record gave it a bit of differentiation um not that the more just acoustic strip back stuff isn't good but uh here you know we kind of uh, ramp that up go electric and um you know, Tracy seemed to sing in a bit of a higher register at different points as well. Kind of have some similarities with Fast Car about this person wanting to, you know, get that ticket, fly away, so to speak, get away from, um, you know, your life circumstances and try to get something better, even though others might be thinking that uh, you're off the mark, as uh, Tracy notes in this song that uh, that uh, most some folks call her a runaway, a failure in the race, but she knows where her ticket takes her. She will find her place in the sun. So, um, you know, a lot to like about the message of this song as well, about going, um, you know, taking those chances to take your ticket out of where you're at, where you seem to be at a, a dead end, so to speak, and trying to, your best to break through, uh, knowing that, um, you know, that it's still going to be difficult to achieve that dream or, um, you know, do whatever your, your mind is made up to do, man. Man, but at least you go out there and try, man. Better to, to fail and try than to not, not try at all, you know, the, as the old saying goes. So uh, solid tune right there. And uh, now we're going to go to Why, only a two minute long song. So uh, let's uh, hear what we got. All right, the short Why uh, definitely packs a punch in its two minutes. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, Tracy really uh, getting, uh, you know, kind of political, philosophical on this track, uh, which shouldn't be a surprise if you've made it to this point in the uh, in the record right here, you know that uh, Tracy's got a lot to say. Asking, like, why are there babies starving when there's enough food to, to feed everybody? Why are there people alone when there's so many of us? Why are the missiles called peacekeepers when they are aimed to kill? And then we get a bunch of the contradictory, you know, um, statements. Love is hate. War is peace. No is yes. And we're all free. I enjoyed the way that Tracy put together that verse, uh, that, uh, you know, the short little verse right there, um, you know, just showing all these contradictions, then letting us know when she's saying, and we're all free. Like, uh, if everything I've been telling you is, you know, had that contradiction nature to it, it should probably cue you in to know we, even though we might be, you know, free, uh, there's still, mm, there's still a lot of progress to be done. Um, and she's even, you know, kind of calls that out, that somebody's going to have to answer for all this and, uh, you know, encourages those that are going out to seek the truth and, um, you know, make a better world to kind of keep on in that fight, uh, so to speak. So, um, though it won't make maybe my favorites on the record, I think uh, it was a, a good jam. And, uh, you know, the, the use of the, you know, the organ kind of in there as well gave it a bit of a punch. So we only have three songs left, y'all. It's a, such a quick moving record. We're going to go now to For My Lover. Another great song right here from Miss Tracy Chapman, For My Lover. Um, again kind of uh just hooked you right from the beginning talking about uh two weeks in a virginia jail so you're already kind of peaked up like okay 
what, what do we got going on here? For my lover, for my love. I love the way that she delivered those lines uh, right there. $20,000 bail. Um, so automatically you're thinking, you know, uh, you know, possible, um, you know, interracial uh, dating um, or, you know, maybe even, you know, same sex dating. Who, who knows? Uh, but whatever the case may be, obviously these people are not uh, are, are not happy uh, right here. Um, everybody thinks that I'm the fool, but they don't get any love from you. The things we won't do for love. She notes, I'd climb a mountain if I had to risk my life so I could have you. Um, she knows that uh, she's almost like psychoanalyzed uh, for her lover. They dope me up and I tell them lies for my lover, for my lover. Um, and heck, it maybe even doesn't have anything. I could have been reading too much into it uh, when talking, you know, these different uh, different types of relationships. It could just be a, a relationship where she's doing anything and everything she can to protect uh, her, her lover. And uh, even if that means lying to the authorities and being in jail, whatever the case may be, I like that it's a bit open to inter interpretation, uh, so to speak. So. So um, all in all, a really strong musical accompaniment here as well. Uh, again, you have that uh, steel guitar that uh, really uh, ramps up towards the end of the song, and um, you know, almost almost had a bit of a Americana esque type of feel. Um, you know, a little folky. Uh, uh, you know, just uh, throughout the song. So. Really, uh, really good tune right there. I had to give the heart treatment, and now we're down to two songs left. We go now to if not now. If not now, we uh, switch gears a bit musically and really uh, just uh, kind of have a, a piano um, be the prominent instrument, a piano uh, as ballad, so to speak, as uh, and Tracy just uh, asked the question, uh, if not now, then when? Uh, why make your promises? A love declared for days to come is as good as none. I think that idea of, oh man, I'm going to love you, um, you know, down the road type of deal. No, I need you to love me right now. Uh, and so she, you know, uses uh, the whole refrain of you can wait till morning comes for the new day. You can wait and soon be sorry. Because uh, if not now, then when? You know, almost that sense of I'm not going to just sit around and, and wait for you to, to love me, so to speak. Because uh, she says, uh, now love's the only thing that's free. We must take it where it's found. Pretty soon it may be costly and you know then she repeats the chorus again right here um yeah, again another solid uh song right here not up to par with the best of the best on this record but that's a really high bar to reach uh, this is definitely a, a worthy album cut though and um you know i, I think works uh, works well uh coming off of of uh, for my my lover as well as you know she continues to uh, muse on on love and um maybe whenever it's uh, not reciprocated as you uh, might like and so now we're going to the closer for you we had for my lover now we're going for you uh what a quick album ladies and gentlemen after this i will give my favorite tracks overall a score of this uh record so let's get to it right for you a uh, wonderful closer right here just um letting again um just letting the acoustic guitar kind of take center stage musically and uh, letting tracy's words go i found it interesting that the, through so much of this record um it's a, it's a very thought you know thoughtful um socially conscious and um, you know, really thinking through relationships where we end the record now with a bit of shift where instead of uh, being led by your mind, being led by your heart right here whenever that uh, true love comes in. She says, no words to say, no words to convey that feeling inside I have for you deep in my heart, safe from the guards of intellect and reason, um, leaving me at a loss for words to express my feelings. Uh, she even notes, uh, but with feelings this strong, I'm no longer the master of my emotions. Those emotions are so intense. Those feelings uh, they are driving Tracy so much right here that uh, they just override every uh, you know type of reason. Love is the, the strongest drug, so they say right here. So I thought it was a, a, an interesting little uh, shift um, thematically on um, the, the rest of the record right here and i think it works quite well as a closer um you know very very pretty song uh great vocal performance by tracy right here and that'll take me to my favorite tracks uh gonna be basic talking about a revolution and fast car uh that one two punch to start is just uh so well done man uh i think behind the wall um it's kind of tough to have that as a favorite you know with the subject matter but i just thought that if it's such a uh, powerful uh, performance of just being acapella and with the lyrical content i 
gotta show that some love. Um, I also am gonna go with For My Lover. Um, I, I thought that was a really great jam. And Mountains of Things um, was one that I had totally forgotten about. And uh, so revisiting it here, um, just I, I thought Tracy had a lot of wise words to say. And speaking of wise, that'll take us now to my overall score and thoughts of this record. Man, it was uh, fun to, like I said, revisit this after uh, you know a few, I think it's been about three, three plus years since I had heard it in full, man. And, um, you know, I was just so impressed by one, uh, the obviously the songwriting and, um, you know, the lyrical content is fantastic here. Tracy uh, tackles so many different subjects and is not afraid to uh, speak her mind. And uh, yet there's a timeless quality about it as well, um, though, though, you know, definitely inspired by that late 80s time period uh, here in America uh, in particular. It, it, it still stands the test of time all these decades later, which uh, you don't need to have a great album but when you uh, you know have that it uh, it's a bit of a feather in your cap as well whenever you have music that can uh, you know speak to generations of uh, well that come well after you so um I, I was really impressed with that i quite enjoyed the uh, instrumentals on here as well a lot of uh, you know softer um almost you know you know just singer songwriter folky type arrangements and yet uh, you know ed black on the uh, pedal steel guitar as well um was able to kind of uh, bring a bit of life you know we had the piano in there so uh, you know, I, I enjoy the instrumentation, and Tracy's got a great voice to boot, man. So all that to say, I'm going to be at like an 82585 for me on this record. Um, I mean, just a fantastic singer-songwriter album right here. And I mean, 11 songs, 36 minutes, it absolutely flies by. And um, no song drags at all, in my opinion. Uh, there's not a weak jam on here, uh, in my estimation, either. So uh, really great uh, debut record by Tracy Chapman. Wish I would have listened to this before we did our 1988 draft uh, again. Um, so I, I didn't, and so it was left on my honorable mentions or else it would have been in my top five, man. So uh, we'll we'll do a little postscript in that video. But uh, all that to say, let me know your favorites from this record, your thoughts on Tracy Chapman as an artist in general. And of course, be sure to show Brian some love by uh, thanking him for suggesting this. And again, be sure to go sub to his channel, man. Got some great videos and series going on over on uh, uh, Brian's channel. So uh, all that to say, if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that big red subscribe and you can check out our patreon page if you'd like to support the channel in any way as well but i guess that'll do it for me today man so thanks so much for watching everyone and until next time i will see you